Welcome back to Mile High Sports. I'm Sean Drotard, Nate Lundy on my left, and then on my further left, of course, Super Bowl champion, uh, Super Bowl 50th Denver Broncos. The Pats come on for the first day, so who else better Good. to talk to yeah, but do you know what, than Ryan Harris? But hold on. Do you know what Anilo just had to do? What's that? You bring, we bring in the big man here right. yeah. with Ryan Harris. Anilo has got, I wish I could get a shot of this. We had to take the tripod and raise it like 18 inches to get you in the shot. You will not hear an apology. Okay. No? You short people, you keep it wherever you want. But those of us who are who are uh, in rarefied air, we're not sorry. We're no. not sorry. No, you're going to, you are going to enjoy that your entire. <laughs> you know what? And, and at the same thing. Tell me something I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. exactly. Not new. Not how you, new. How you been, my man? Man, I have been fantastic. Uh, I'm I'm in my groove as a professional and also in my groove as a father. Got the e-bikes this year. So put over 250 miles with the kids on the e-bikes, hitting trails this summer and okay. being a dad. And now I'm t starting to get ready to be a professional. Again. I, I got to be honest, Ryan. I halfway expected as the Olympics were getting underway that I was going to see you in Tahiti on the uh, Team USA oh. surfing squad. I I've wish been, this guy's been posting on <laughs> social media, him uh, getting out to California yeah. getting out and surfing. Yeah. Like all he's doing, Sean, is rubbing our noses in the fact that you and I have the athletic ability of a caterpillar <laughs> uh, I, and the inability to do any of that. Yeah. Like you are living your best life well, he's now. Not that wearing, you're done. He's yeah. not wearing his rings. So he could have be rubbing it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's a hierarchy of needs, right? You got to You got to do the things that make you the person you want to be. And, uh, Surfing, like golfing, like skiing, right? You got to be focused. You can't force it. And, and especially for someone like me who keeps moving at a fast clip, it's good to just settle down. But might might get one more surf trip in, but probably not as uh, <laughs> as training camp is fully underway and the work has begun. Yeah, and you might want to check a map. We're a few grand thousand miles from anywhere you're going to be able to surf. <laughs> but the, Currently, yes. Currently, but yes. talk to me in a few yeah, years. I might have a solution there for you. you. Go. Well, you <laughs> talked about you know the idea of being, being your best self. You're the host of the, the Great Iron and Growth podcast yeah and, and the genesis behind that for people who haven't subscribed but one you're going to want to in a minute but to tell them more about it yeah benny fowler and i super bowl champion benny fowler we uh one of the things we've seen in retirement is how many stories that you know people don't know exist right you're an athlete for so long or you're in one field for so long and so what we did is we brought the best people that we know from sports as well as professions uh, like uh, private equity people, marketers, things like that, just to tell people the amount of stories there are that all include overcoming obstacles, learning new skills, finding out how to talk to people, teaching people how to respect you. And these are things that we can serve our former teammates with by giving them these stories, but also anybody who's looking to achieve something, they hear a story that resonates with them. We, we had a, a, a young lady who owns her own athleisure wear company, a former Air Force officer who went to leave and start her own athleisure company. Now it's one of the biggest athleisure companies in the world. So people like that talk about their journey, their experience, and though they may not wear pads, and some of, some of our guests do, but just the stories of perseverance and accomplishment is something that we want to get out there to the world. Gridiron and Growth, the name of the podcast. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to you. I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've chatted, but we haven't been able to get specific in a setting like this in an interview style. Um, we basically took uh, the entire college football landscape <laughs> and like an Etch-A-Sketch we shook it uh, as a nation and are now completely redrawing it. I have not had a chance to ask you your take and your opinion on the complete upheaval that has happened with the lines of the conferences with, um, you know, and you know me, Ryan, I'm an Oregon State grad. So I'm the I'm like the I'm like the redheaded You're orphan beaver. right You're now. Yeah, yeah, I'm the orphan right now. It's me in the pack two uh, with the Washington State Cougars. But your overall take on what's happened with college football, you're a part of the broadcast for Notre Dame. Um, so you are, you know, knee, hip, shoulders deep in everything going on with college football. Well, and I'd like to point out that first and foremost, everybody listening, including you two right now, do not work for free. Let's start there. <laughs> so we all understand not working for free. Correct. And let's be clear. Most of us would not work for free if we were given the opportunity to do what we're doing. That's the change. And listen, are there going to be issues? Maybe. But let's. But what are the issues? There are going to be issues, and we've seen them with kids doing two things. One, following the money, which is the wrong way to go. So make that mistake as early as possible. And number two, they're going to not understand what they're signing over. I believe it was a kid at Florida signed over 20% of his future earnings, and he didn't know it. So 
the education that has to happen to stop the current percentage, 78% of NFL players go bankrupt two years after they're done playing, it has to change. And it starts with the incredible revenue that teams are bringing, that players are bringing to these college teams. And when I was at Notre Dame, Forbes did an article. They said, when I was at Notre Dame, my years, I should have been paid $430,000 per year. That's how much revenue the left tackle was bringing in for for that school. We went to back-to-back BCS games. So if you have an opinion about NIL, it's irrelevant. Kids are getting paid the way all of us like to get paid. And it's right because I've been on the on the plane when we're going to a bowl game and I meet people in the athletic department I never met before. And they're saying, oh, yeah, my kids are coming on Friday and I'm golfing for Wednesday and Thursday. Who is this guy? <laughs> right. But I can't get more than a pair of sweatpants. That's what's going on in NIL and the changes for the best. So let me ask you this real quick as a follow up. You just said, follow the money, make that mistake early as early be- as you can, because that's the mistake. hundred percent. So are the schools making the same mistake? Are they making the mistake following the money? S- schools have been making money. I mean, you're talking to me. No, no, but I'm, yeah, talking, yeah. About, I'm talking about all the weird. Or, I'm talking about and, yeah. Oregon shifting USC, UCLA, Arizona, Washington, um, the schools that are shifting are doing it specifically for the money. Are they making a mistake? No, they are not. And one of the things that's going to come out, they're going to start lowering the conference um, required games to about five, maybe seven games. So what they're doing is saying, look, maybe, you know, Maryland doesn't fit in X, Y, in the Big Ten. But if Maryland only has to play five Big Ten games, well, now Maryland can play seven other schools that are in the neighborhood. Right. right. So. That's where these schools are making money by joining these conferences. Not only are you getting more TV revenue, more eyes, that's the thing that players care about, but you're also giving, making that discussion to create a wedge and create more closely held athletic events that will save drastic amounts of money so your softball team's not flying to Michigan and then Indiana and things like that. Ryan, what you're talking about is interesting, and we won't get into the details of it here, but what you're talking about is really kind of how college hockey works. Conferences have no geographical yes. alignment whatsoever. Yeah. It's set up with, with teams that have sort of similar objectives, right. and then they build out that way. So there's already a model for that in the collegiate world to work. But when looking at some of the players, it's interesting. Sean Keelan, the Post, had an article about Braden Fowler Nicolosi, who took over as the quarterback of Colorado State last year. Recruited in the offseason to, to, to transfer, uh, talk to schools like Georgia, things like that. When he's talking about chasing the money, that's where I look at it, too. There's the short term and there's the long term. Fowler Nicolosi decided to stay at Colorado State. Now, 15 years ago, that would have sounded crazy. You'd been better off going to be a backup quarterback at Georgia yeah. and getting the looks there. But now we, we've, it, we're watching an NFL in which two quarterbacks from North Dakota State were drafted in the top three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you play well, they will find you. And so what Fowler Nicolosi did is pass on the maybe more immediate fame of being the, the heir apparent at Georgia and betting on himself, but I'm going to start now. And if I put up the numbers that, that I think I can put up, I'm betting on myself and the team will find me. That's a that's a risk for sure, sure. Uh, because the network for Colorado State is different than the network mm-hmm. at Georgia. Let's be clear. Um, um, but hey, whatever makes sense for the player, and those are the kinds of decisions that make your life what you want it to be. It's not hey, I'm I got a great opportunity. Not every opportunity is right for you, and to be able to have that analysis is something that is woefully undertaught. I mean, it's school. not easy to pass up Georgia. It's not easy to pass up anything, right? right, right I mean, exactly. you know, hey, if somebody walked by here with some creamsicles, we'd be like, ah, well, maybe. I wasn't thinking about one, oh, but I need it don't now. Don't tempt me with a good but, time. You know, <laughs> but it's just when we're presented with options, having a process to analyze what's best for you is critical. And kids are getting that opportunity now with the change in NIL and, and the fact that they're making money. And look, mistakes are being made. I, I talked to a family. Their son was at Michigan. This is before last season left because he was going to make $60,000 at another school. He was playing at Michigan. They won the national championship last year. What is that $60,000, which after taxes is 40, which after all the mistakes you make is really 10, right? So, I mean, you you gave up a national championship for $10,000, and hopefully that player learned how to create an analysis for a better decision next time out out here at dove valley with the broncos getting pads on of course you remember those days getting the pads on <laughs> the, the broncos offensive line at this point is uh pretty well established four of the five starters will return the center position is at the moment at least an open competition but for this team and for bo Nix is the starting quarterback when he becomes the starter and will be sooner rather than later barring injury how important is it to get stability at that center position as well as the rest of the offensive line? Because this is a team that at least last year had difficulty finding playmakers. 
the offensive line has a larger role and more important role with a rookie quarterback than they might with a more of Wiley veteran. Well, you you know, I'm biased. I'll say that. But <laughs> linemen have the most important role, right? Number one, get the ball to the quarterback. Number two, get off on the light. So, so you can't help you on a center back. is the easiest place to insert a new player because you, that center is in constant communication with the guard next to him and the guard next to him and usually the tackle. If the tackle's smart, the tackle's screaming at the center, who's the mic? What are we doing? Oh my God. I mean, that's what you do. Um, so any position other than center is tough. Cause if you look at a guard, a guard, you know, the tackle's talking about something totally different than the center. Play. Now they got to play. Right. And we did that the year we won the Super Bowl with Matt Paradis had never started. All of a sudden comes in, starts 19 straight games, wins the Super Bowl, right? And has $70 million at the end of his career. So there's a variety of ways you can do it. But make no mistake, the offensive line is on notice from Coach Payton. They didn't get anybody in free agency. They didn't make any big draft picks at offensive line. That's him telling these guys, you play better or I will bring people in. And you will not have to wonder if they're taking your job. That's why I'm bringing them in. So I think that you're going to see the best play from the offensive line that we've seen in the last few years because of that clear expectation of improvement. Ryan, if I ask you to define what a successful season is for this team in 2024, what's the answer? Playoffs. Make the playoffs. Find really? a way to make the playoffs. If you can be a wild card team in the AFC, you are elite. Let's be clear. And this is the packed division. Uh, this is a packed conference. But they, you got to get that playoff experience. And more than anything, it's for the players on the roster. My first playoff game, I remember we were playing uh, the division. The, the wild card game is kind of like the regular season, but we won in a division game against the Patriots. And we got, we were up, I believe, it was with Gary Kubiak at the Texans. I think it was like 17 to 7 or 17 to 3. And we lost that game 42 to 7 because in the second half, they came out and taught everybody on the team what it takes to win in the playoffs. You can't get that experience and knowledge if you don't get there. And the number one thing this team needs to do is get to the playoffs to learn what it takes to win and how much of a choice it is as a player, whether you're going to do what's willing to, if you're willing to do what needs to be done to be successful. If that's the measurement for success, then we have to look at the flip side of the coin. What does it mean if they don't make the playoffs? They have to win more games than last year. And let's be clear. You got $80 million guaranteed coming to this coach. He ain't going nowhere. He's not going anywhere. So if there isn't an improvement, they don't make the playoffs, you're going to see some roster, cha roster changing and shuffling, and uh, you're going to see a more concerted effort in the draft to maybe either use draft capital for a player or to make some acquisitions. And look, I mean, Devontae Adams is available, you know, and whether or not you want to do that deal, he still has the juice. So um, there's, a, there's always options when you're looking at building a team but right now in training camp, you're getting your pads on for the first time around here. It's about improving every day and making sure that your teammates understand your willingness to rip someone's face so mask off and, and, and win a play. All right, last one. Uh, the over-under on wins for Notre Dame is 10. Where am I betting? Over. You think so? Over. They like the schedule this year? I like the schedule. I like Riley Leonard who won the air raid competition at the Manning Passing Academy. I like the fact that Notre Dame is O-line U, that they're returning the best defense. Check this out. The number one defensive tackle in Howard Cross had the most tackles for any defensive tackle in college football last year. Oh, there's Benjamin Morrison, top corner. Hello, you need a corner? And then you got Xavier Watts, who just won the Bronco Dickerski Award for being the best defensive player he's coming back to. So Notre Dame is going to compete for a national championship this year, and it's going to be fun to call. Ryan Harris, of course, former uh, Irish, and of course, current. It's down here. Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah, still, yeah, yeah, still yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're First, me, first so things first. But uh, obviously, it's thrilling to get the chance to talk to you again. Obviously, one of our favorite people to talk to, regardless of uh, sport or not. So I really appreciate the time while you're out here. We know you're busy. Thanks for stopping in and sharing with us. Your thoughts. Go to our Lundy. Love you both. Great to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Go check out the Gridiron Growth Podcast as well. Ryan Harris joining us. We'll be back next.